Andreas, I know something of quantum mechanics and a lot about cosmology. And quantum mechanics is of the very small dealing with particles and fields at the most microscopic level. And cosmology is a study of the universe. Uh, in recent uh, decade or two, uh, the idea of quantum cosmology comes up. That sounds like an oxymoron uh, to, when you're dealing with the very smallest thing applied to the very largest. So how does this happen and why are you a quantum cosmologist? So maybe I'll start by trying to kind of reset your perspective a little bit. <laughs> so as a physicist, I, I understand that quantum mechanics underlies everything. Mm -hmm. So you, we're all quantum, everything is quantum. And then the fact is that many of the features of quantum physics don't really show up in ordinary things. So this is a quantum bench, but we never mm -hmm. have to use quantum mechanics to, to understand it. But you have to, uh, those, those we call it a bench is a classical object, you and I are classical objects. We, we have to earn that status. <laughs> it's quantum, every, quantum is everywhere, and it's only certain things that can, be, can ignore it, basically. And, and so, of course it's a quantum universe. There's, there's no, no question about that. But, but then, um, okay, so that's, a, that's kind of a glib answer, yeah. but let's get a little deeper. So, so the answer that probably anyone, anyone at this conference would give is cosmic inflation. So, so one of the remarkable features of cosmic inflation is that it expands the universe very rapidly, and as it does so, it takes fe features that are way down at the tiny quantum level and, and just pushes them up to the biggest scales so that actually every, according to cosmic inflation theory, every galaxy that we see was created out of a tiny quantum thing. Which is a, 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 an awesome concept. Absolutely awesome. It's, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. And so much so that it pushes. So, so we think we know the quantum nature of the elementary particles, but inflation is so fierce that it pushes the boundaries of that down to where we're not even sure we know the quantum nature of what's, what's coming up from the quantum level. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a very exciting, very um, profound part of our studies. What are some of the current issues that uh, others and you are working on at the uh, frontier of the field? Well, one of the, one of the things that really fascinates me, I, I've been very um, curious about the possibility of a finite universe, and there's several mm. reasons, and where modern um, sort of modern understandings of cosmology have allowed us to explore that possibility in, in a more concrete way. You know, the dark energy, a whole other topic, but the dark energy is actually made it possible to think about a finite universe in more concrete terms than we ever have been able to do before. And, it, and one of the, and that's something I've developed quite a bit, and one of the interesting um, features of that is that we may actually see in the universe around us the hints of the very beginning of inflation. So basically, most inflation theories have, inflation runs so long that we'll never see the beginning. Right. But, but in, in my theory, you actually can look back to the beginning um, because inflation's short, shorter than most people think it is. And what, what do you define as short? Uh, just long enough to create the universe around us. So, uh, so, so it doesn't have to be it's about sixty-five expansion times at the okay. time. So, 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 so it's um, just enough so the very largest objects in our universe were maybe present right at the beginning of inflation, mm -hmm. maybe a little before inflation. And we've done some modeling of that. And one of the fascinating things that's come out, and it's just, just come out in the paper where um, we just posted the preprint, we, we show that um, one of the ways we model that beginning, the sort of special features of the beginning of inflation can show up in tiny little wiggles in the, in the power spectrum of the microwave background. Hmm. The, very fi the microwave background is probably the most important data set sure. in cosmology. Right. And, and the best data set we have there's some sort of informal puzzlement about some of the small scale features. Is it noise? Is it, is it physics? And we're starting to see this. We have a way with our theory of creating this, these kind of tiny fluctuations out of physics. And, and the project we're starting now, now that we know we can create them, the project we're starting now is to see, do the, you know, does the data actually match what we're predicting? And what would be the implications of that if it does? So, the clear implication is that there would be a, um, a different initial state than people assume for inflation, and one that w is motivated by the short, the, the finite universe theory. Oh. So, so, so the, the, the clearest implication is something's different 
from what we thought about inflation. And then exactly what that is, we'll, we'll have to work harder on. But I'd have my favorite. <laughs> I, I, have, I, have a, I have an idea what that might be. What are some other issues that are uh, extant in, in quantum cosmology? Well, there still remains, so even if you believe in inflation, there's the question of what went before. And um, we have, I would say, way too little to say about that. A lot rides on that. The, the arrow of time is an absolutely crucial question for cosmology. It absolutely does depend on what went before. Um, what, even what these quantum features look like um, that I was just talking about depends on what went before. So, so that's a wide open subject. and. Um, very difficult. One. How, how, how do you attack what, what's gone before? What kind of imprint of what was before can be on what is now since it went through the inflation and the Big Bang? So um, that's, there, so, so I guess one, one thing I should say is that um, you work, a lot of this work is done based on the curiosity and you hope it better have some <laughs> imprint. But there are kinds of imprints you could have. and, and and really, in, in my in my theory, where there's a short amount of inflation, you lo are looking at what happened before. You look at the oh, beginning of oh, inflation. Oh. You're, you're learning about what happened before. Mm. So it could be all these oscillations we see in the micro background. Could be it's the tiny oscillations might be mm. might be from that. Um, other things. Pe people have a lot of different ideas about what went before, and some people have tried to make predictions. Other. It's it's such a big. I, I think it's such a difficult theoretical problem. But it's okay for people to struggle with the theory for a little bit without rushing to a conclusion about how you'd observe it. But it absolutely is crucial. I, I think for us to be um, satisfied as scientists, you really want to have some observable prediction when all is said and done. And um, we don't probably don't know when the next, where the next exciting thing is going to come from. That's I, part of the excitement. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs>